Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the parish family of St. Lucy's and Sacred Heart in Cumbernauld. This evening, we will be reflecting on the appearance of Jesus to two of his disciples as recorded in the Gospel according to Luke. But first, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, may we look forward with hope to our resurrection, for you have made us your sons and daughters, and restored the joy of our youth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Gospel according to Luke. That very same day, the first day after the Sabbath, two of the disciples of Jesus were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking together about all that had happened. Now, as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, What matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them, called Cleopas, answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things, he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people, and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to the to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened. Some women from our group have outstanded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found exactly as, and found everything exactly as the woman had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he did as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now, while he was with them at the table, he said he took the bread and said the blessings. Then he broke it and handed it to them, and their eyes were opened and they recognized him, he had vanished from their side. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen 
and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord In today's Gospel, Jesus is revealed to us as the Messiah in Scripture and as the risen Lord in the Eucharist. It tells the story of two of Jesus' disciples who were traveling from Jerusalem to Emmaus on the day of the resurrection. On their way, they encountered the risen Lord, whom they did not recognize, but engaged in a deep and sorrowful conversation with. It is clear from their conversation that their joy and excitement of Palm Sunday suddenly turned into the horrors of Good Friday and worsened by the confusion of Easter Sunday morning when they were told that his body was missing. Their feeling was summed up by Cleopas when he said that we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. In the space of seven days, their hopes and expectation of a Messiah and Savior had turned into hopelessness, confusion, and sadness. At different stages in our lives, we walk a similar road. It can be our struggle to come to terms with the death of a loved one. A phone call from our doctor say our health is worsening and nothing can be done to help us. A letter from my employer to say we no longer have a job for you. It can be a struggle with addiction, our mental health, or simply the anxieties caused by the uncertainties of the ongoing pandemic. Hopelessness and confusion and easily flourish under these conditions and are very difficult to cure once they set in. But today's gospel is a reminder to us that things can quickly change for us. Our hopelessness, our sadness can quickly turn to joy and happiness if we believe in the message of the risen Lord. We must trust that only God can deliver beyond the confines of our hopes and vulnerabilities into eternity where our every longing, need or expectation will be met. At their darkest moment, Jesus used scriptures and the Eucharist to reveal himself to his disciples and restore their hope and joy. As Christians, when everything appears overwhelming and difficult to understand, when we had hoped that our doctor would bring us and tell us that they found a cure for our condition, when we had hoped that scientists would come up with a vaccine or a cure for the COVID-19 virus, we must step aside and go back to the Bible to the church and to the Eucharist to refocus our minds to the redeeming grace and providence of God through the merits of Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. We must remember that whenever we hear the word and partake in the Eucharist as part of the church, as part the parish family of Sacred Heart and St. Lucy's. Even at this time when we cannot sit at Mass, our risen Lord is present in our midst. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to recognize your presence within us 
and our minds to understand the truth of your saving word. You will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord bless us and keep us from all evil and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.